Pound, star in Mrs. Mice. And now here is the producer of the Broadway Playhouse, Mr. William Keeley. Canadian Mounted Police are concerned with how they get their match. Mrs. Mike is different. It is the personal story of Mounty and the woman he loves. With all the day-by-day adventures and heartaches that come to those who live in remote places. Tonight's play was an enormous success as a novel. And Regal Films has given the book an honest and sympathetic motion picture production. One of the hits of the current season. As Mike, you'll hear Dick Powell, who gives one of his finest performances as a dauntless Mountie. In the title role of Mrs. Mike, we present the very charming and talented actress, Jean Tierney, as the courageous pioneer woman of the early 1900s. Now, here is Mrs. Mike, starring Jean Tierney in the title role, and Dick Powell as Mike. Western Canada some 40 years ago. It played up and Sergeant Michael Flanagan of the Northwest Mounted Police carries a half-conscious man to the kitchen door of a ranch house. Open up. Open up or I'll drop him on the porch. John. John, open up. My uncle isn't home. He's... Ah! Hello? Is he... Is he dead? Smell it. Oh, like a brewery. I think he was trying to be one. Well, why have you brought him here? Don't you want him? I certainly do not. Now, thank you to get him out of here right now. I don't think your uncle would like that. Where is he? He's out looking for Mr. Hawkins, the cook. Well, this just happens to be Mr. Hawkins, Hello, the cook. Hello, we got a... Oh. You haven't been here very long, have you? No. I just arrived today from Boston. That's in Massachusetts. Thank you. And your name is Catherine Mary O'Fallon. Your uncle told me he was expecting you. I'm Sergeant Mike Flanagan. Well, Shut up, Danny. Shut up, will you? Miss O'Fallon, do you happen to have any coffee ready? Right here on the stove. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid Danny's in no condition to get supper tonight. Can you cook? Of course I can cook. <laughs> You made this coffee? What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing at all, Miss O'Fallon. Only now I know why they prefer tea in Boston. I think maybe sleep is what Danny really needs. I'll give you a hand as soon as I get him in bed. No, you will. On second thought, don't touch a thing, Miss O'Fallon. I'll fix it myself. <laughs> Michael. When he tells me he'll fix that good dinner I had. Oh, I guess I helped a little. The cook all right? <laughs> Full of remorse and bacon soda. <laughs> kind of uh, early for you to be around, isn't it? Oh, no, no. I just thought I'd say hello to Miss O'Fallon. That is, if she'll speak to me. Well, now, the last I saw her, she was getting one of the hands out of the horse. Can she ride? Well, there she goes across the pasture. Oh, no. Oh, what's she doing to that horse? What's that horse doing to her? Uh, be a good lad, Mike. Prevent a calamity. Uh, Kathy! Slow down, girl! Slow down! John had asked me to prevent a calamity. I suppose I did, as far as Kathy's riding was concerned. In a few weeks, she became quite an expert rider. But then another kind of calamity threatened. I began to fall in love with her. I struggled against it as best I could, but I was doomed from the start. So, uh... So you like being a mounted policeman, do you? You like bossing people around. Oh, we don't do much bossing, Kathy. It's a good life. But all those rules and regulations. What's wrong with rules and regulations? Well, I happened to hear a certain person say the other day that a mounty had to be a member of the force for five years before he could get married. Well? Oh, that's silly. Well, there's a reason for it. After five years, a mounty knows what kind of life he's asking a woman to share. Well, I think that's terribly unsafe. Um, uh, how long have you been in the fort, Mike? Oh, uh, about six and a half years. Oh, that long? Well, I guess the men who wrote those regulations really do know best. Mm. 
I hope so. What did you mean before? The, uh, the kind of life? Well, uh, some of our posts up north, they're, uh, well, they're, they're pretty remote. Oh. And they do have snow where you're going, don't they? Oh, we have snow, yes. It's probably just like Boston in the winter. Well, no, no, Kathy. No, not quite. I, I've lived in places where my closest neighbor was two weeks away by dog team. The trouble with Boston is that it's so crowded. People all jammed together. The North Country is rough, sometimes dangerous. Well, do you know how many people were killed in Boston last year by corpses towers? It uh, gets better cold up north. I've seen the thermometer drop to 60 degrees below zero. Do you know something, Mike? I never catch cold in the winter. Hmm. Really? Never. Sometimes the Mahdi goes on patrol for weeks and weeks. Ah, oh, if you really love a person, you're never alone. Kathy. Kathy, I... Oh, yes, Mike. I, uh... Uh... Well, if we're going to get to that dance, I'd better take you back to your Uncle John. Yes, Mike. Hmm. to a dance at McGregor's place. Especially a woman who's reared in the city. Why, she won't be There's no one. snow at McGregor's. And it's only ten miles south, not north. Oh, hey, you, you're not favoring on asking Candy to do? Not this man, John. Much as I like to. Oh, well, now, let me go hitch up the buckboard for you. Uh, Candy, that policeman's here. Mike. Yes? Back at the house when you and Uncle John were talking. Oh, just how much did you hear? Not enough, I'm afraid. That's good. What did you mean, as much as you'd like to? I, uh, I didn't mean a thing. Oh. Well, don't you think it depends on a woman? Well, don't you? Well, if you'd done a good job of eavesdropping, you'd have heard me tell your uncle that I wasn't taking any woman farther than McGregor's ranch. That as far as you're going? That's as far as I go. Oh. And why can't we go there a little faster? Come on, boy. Get up there. Yep, yep. Help me fix your foot bath. 
It, uh, snowed today in Edmonton. Huh? Who told you? Uh, Anderson came down to pick up his wife. He's taking her back with him. Poor girl. That's no place for a woman. That depends on the woman. John, uh, how's the kettle, Mike? Full? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fallen hot. Then I, I break up the fire a bit. Oh, John, John, you're making it awfully hard for me to say what I want to say. Well, which is what, Michael? Which is what? That if Kathy cares enough for me, she'll want to come with me. Mike, you put me in a devil of a fix, you know that. Yes, yes, I know. I also know that I love her. Oh, do you, Mike? Do you? I thought you were going to bed. Kathy, in your bed slippers. Shame on you, girl. Go to bed. I will not. Besides, I just hold up. Well, that's easily fixed. We'll save your uncle from carrying your bath up the stairs. No, 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 my Put her down. You bet I will. No! It's too hot, my feet! It's good for you. Uncle John, make him stop. Mike, I think this has gone too far. It John. has indeed. And now is the time to get it settled. If I were trying to... You be me, quiet. John, I'm asking your permission to speak to Kathy. Well, me boys, as I said to you before... I you... love her. I want her to be my wife. Do you, Mike? Do you? I'm speaking to your uncle. Well, John... Well, now, there's no man I'd rather see or have than you, Mike, but I... Well, it seems to me that someone else's permission comes first. Have I nothing to say about this? Kathy, your uncle is too good a friend of mine for... Well, what about me? I hope you think as much of me as you do of my uncle. Well, of course I do. Well, then, just you... (laughs) God bless you. Thank you. If you love me, you just tell me. I'm the one to say it to. Kathy, I love you. I always have, and I think you know it. And if you want to marry me, you just ask me. All right. Will you marry me? I'll think it over. And maybe I will, and maybe I won't. What do you mean, maybe you will? And now, if you'll both excuse me, I'm trying to take a foot bath. <laughs> When Kathy said yes to me, she also said yes to a distant land, cold and dangerous, to discomfort and loneliness. The day after we were married, we took the train to Edmonton. After that, we had almost 400 miles by dog team. And Kathy found that it was not just like Boston in the winter. This was a snow country, a vast, white, frightening wilderness. I have a feeling that we're the only two people in the whole world. Oh, it's a nice feeling, isn't it, Kathy? Oh, yes. How far did we travel today? Oh, we did very well today. At least 27 miles. Only 27 miles? Mm, if we keep that up, we'll be there in two weeks. Two weeks? <gasps> What's that? That's only a wolf. Only a wolf? <laughs> Don't be so scared. You've got the dogs, the fire, and me to protect you. Yes. What more could a girl ask? We kept going each day as long as the waning light was permitted. Kathy no longer calculated day and night. Time and space became meaningless. Each day was like the last, cold and vast. But I had a surprise for Kathy. There was a prospector I knew who had a cabin just east. Well, if this ain't some surprise. And look, Ma, Sergeant Mike's gone out and got himself a wife. <laughs> That's right, Mrs. Howard. I had her imported from Boston, USA. Bo- my, my, let me look at you. My, she's perfect. Well, of course, you can't tell much if they're all bundled up like that. Oh, you just come along with me, dear. You must be bored out and half frozen. Paul and the dog said no joke for a girl from Boston. This'll be yours in Sergeant Mike's room. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Howard. It's very nice. Just got married, huh? Three weeks already. Three weeks. All right, you boys, go outside and take care of the dogs. You, uh, you have two fine boys, Mrs. Howard. Oh, try not to mind them. They ain't dumb. <laughs> well, the first since they were old enough to remember... Well, there's water in the pitcher, and here's the towel. I'll be right back. Yes, sir, Sergeant Mike, be sure of her safe. Everything all right, dear? Oh, honey, the water's freezing, Cory. Well, that's good for your circulation. Oh, it's such a comfort to be married to a man who can explain the way to cold. A man who could keep me warm would be too much... Oh, no. What's the matter? This towel. Am I that dirty? Oh, no, no, no. 
I'll leave this towel at a head start before you ever got near it. But they ever wash? Well, sure they wash. But doing the laundry isn't easy up here in the winter time. I'll tell you a little secret. I've never heard of anyone suffering from using a dirty towel. But I know a lot of people who got mighty sick from walking around with wet snakes. Oh, Mike, you can wash up in the kitchen. I want a little time with your wife, too. She's all yours, Mrs. Howard. Oh, I can't tell you how glad I am to have you and Sergeant Mike with us, even just for overnight. I guess it does get kind of lonesome here. Well, there's certainly enough to keep a body busy. Of course, in the summer when Henry goes off prospecting for gold, I get a hankering for conversation, even with Henry. Has he ever found any gold? No, but he was mighty close nine years ago, and again four years ago we thought we'd hit it. Oh, we will someday. Oh, I hope so. And when we do, we'll go to Edmonton, and we'll buy so many. My, what a lovely dress. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. Would you like to wear it? Oh, I... Oh, no, Mrs. Mike. But thank you. You wear it. Let's both get dressed up tonight. I'll wear my best, too. We'll make it a real party. Why, oh, yes, Mrs. Howard. If you'd like. I guess that's what it was for Howard, the real party. Even Mr. Howard got all dressed up. No tie, of course, but he did put on the collar. And the boys combed the hair, sat the table, and sat the table. Now, Mrs. Sir, we got tea and prunes. Coming up here, we call them lumberjack strawberries. <laughs> Why, I just love prunes. I was hoping we'd have a real dessert. Maybe candy. Now, you know the candy's all gone, Henry. You know, I get the most terrible craving for candy. Like some men have for liquor, only with me it's candy. I tell you, it's terrible. I can tell you how terrible it is, Kathy. My china plates went long ago, and the first chance I had to buy a new set, he took the money and spent it on candy. Imagine that, a grown man squandering money on candy. Well, it's the most terrible craving I got. It's just terrible. But I saved one china cup. One cup that didn't get broken all these years. Here. It's for you, dear. Celebrate this wonderful night. Thank you, Mrs. Howard, but... Well, now, I didn't know you had one of them left. Well, I keep it here. That's why I still got it. Otherwise... Kathy. I broke it. I broke your cup. But it doesn't matter. It's just... Oh, oh no. No, I... I broke it. It sure busted, all right. But we never used the cup. We... We won't miss it. Why, we're... So used to pin points, so we terribly, terribly sorry. But you mustn't be. I when Henry strikes gold, we will have all the cups we want. Give me that. Late that night, I heard Kathy sobbing quietly to herself. <laughs> Kathy, what is it, darling? Oh, my. That cop. That poor woman. She knows you'll never strike gold. Her whole life is so. That's what this country does to a woman. No, darling. Oh, don't let it happen to me. It won't, Kathy. It can't. The only thing this country can do to us is bring us closer together. Right now. Tell me the war. Then why did you put your arms around me? You see, the country's bringing us closer together already. Mike. Mike. And the curtain falls on the first act of Mrs. Mike, starring Gene Tenley and Dick Powell. Freedom is a very precious thing. The rights and privileges of free men have been established through documents that are universally recognized and honored. 
They've existed since the time of the Magna Carta with the British. They're shown in our own Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, and Bill of Rights. The French are equally proud of their Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen. And all the members of the United Nations have expressed the same thoughts in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But merely putting these things down on paper and attaching signatures to them is not enough. Freedom of speech, of worship, freedom to vote, freedom from fear. It's easy to agree that these things are desirable. But it takes strong, free men of vision to guard them and ensure that they shall continue to exist. Daniel Webster once said this. God grants liberty only to those who live it are always ready to guard it and defend it. Remember, freedom is everybody's business. Have you made it yours? Mrs. Mike, starring Dick Powell as Mike and Jean Tierney as Mrs. Mike. Our destination was a tiny pinpoint in the Northwest Territory called Henry Hope. Just a cluster of cabins, a trading post run by Jim Henderson and a handful of people, Indians mostly, and half breeds. But this was our first home, and Kathy was determined to make the best of it. Well, well, it's nice. It is nice, and this cabin's all ours, isn't it? Oh, it's a little bare at the moment, but with your talents for housekeeping, it'll look like a palace. Mike, this is for you. Mm. Uncle John. It's all right, Kathy. It's all right. Stop shaking. Uh, sit down, uh, Abner, and open your mouth. No, no, no. That tooth is really bad. It'll have to come out. You mean Mr. Dennis here? Why, yes. He just arrived. Dr. Flanagan of the Modest Police. You? All I have to do now is find my medicine. Yes. Does, it, does it hurt very much, Mr. Adam? Mm. Oh. oh, it does, doesn't it? Maybe this will help. It'll be fine. Merely good Irish whiskey. Big drink. Kathy, you will have to help me. Just a minute, Miss Daddy. But I don't know anything about pulling a tooth. Well, now's a good time to learn. Get a little John's whiskey. It'll do the sterilizer for you. It's over there on the table. I... Well, what happened to it? Who's been drinking it? Oh, I didn't drink it, Mike. He did. He did? Well, he was in such pain. I thought... Do you realize what you've done? You can get six months in jail for giving liquor to an Indian. Well, I only thought... Oh, never was... mind. Never mind. It's too late now. I'll get around to you later. Now, all right, that new. Get ready. Mike, I, I think I'll start on packing. You'll I... stand right here and read this medical book to me. Come on, Avenue. Open up. He won't open his mouth. Then hold his nose. Mike, but... but... Hold his nose, he'll have to open his mouth. <sighs> now, you see? All right, now start reading. Carefully insert forceps. Into the mouth. Uh-huh. Oh, they're in. What's next? And place the left knee between the patient's legs. Oh, I'm sure that isn't necessary. You better do what the book says, Mike. Uh, read that again. And place the left knee between the patient's legs. But, Kathy, I can't from here. That's impossible. But it's right here in black and white. And... Oh. Well? I skipped the page. The knee is for artificial respiration. Here, secure the tooth with the feet and the fork. I had to work slowly, and every time I turned my back, Kathy poured another slug of Irish whiskey into Atenu. By the time the tooth came out, our patient was enjoying himself immensely. <laughs> <laughs> good medicine. <laughs> Very good medicine. <laughs> Pull more tooth. Uncle John, you see what's happened to my wedding present. All right. All right, Atenu. Here. Here's your tooth. Ah, tooth of wisdom. The score. You take, take. What? Tooth, fine love charm, the score. Keep love always. 
Kate! Better take it, dear. You may hurt his feelings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, I, I think I'm going Pretty score. Thank you, Atenu. But plenty weak. And you're plenty drunk. I'm locking you up in the cell to sleep it off. Me good in there. Yeah, yeah. March, march. <laughs> Kathy kept her word and did make a real home for us. As the months went by, she became an expert cook. And while she never did learn how to make a good cup of coffee, I discovered I was really quite fond of tea. At least half my time was spent far from home out on patrol, but Kathy never complained. Mrs. Henderson, Jim's Indian wife, became her close friend and the trading post, the center of what little social life is. What are you doing beautifully, Mrs. Henderson? You know as well as I do now. You very pleasant lady to teach me. You'll have that sweater finished in sunny town for your new baby. When do you expect your baby, Mrs. Henderson? Oh, when baby ready, him come. Do you have any fear of having a baby? Aren't you afraid? Afraid? Oh, baby. Oh, aren't you worried? Not having a doctor. But me not sick. I not need doctor. But you're going to have a baby. When Tommy was born, did you have any trouble? Oh, Tommy, good boy. Tommy, no trouble. You're so much wiser than so many people I know. Me not wise. Just a woman. You'll find out sometime. No problem, Miss Knight. I came home that day from patrol. I'd been a hundred miles or so to the east. And there I'd picked up some unpleasant news from an Indian trapper. Small pot. But, Mike, if they're a hundred miles away from here... I uh, can't take any chances, Kathy. I, I'll still have to vaccinate our Indians. And just what does that mean? Oh, sending Atmu to Chief Iron Eye. He'll have to talk it over for a few days, and then, likely as not, he'll bring the chief in to talk to me. All right, Mike. I'll get the medical book. How to vaccinate an Indian in ten easy lessons. Come in. Chief, I and I here. Also brave. All right, Atenu, bring him in. Well, Kathy, it looks like we're going to have company. How nice. I'll open the window. Come in, come in, come in, Chief. Well, uh... When can we start the vaccination? I not want medicine. Oh, but vaccination is necessary. Much sickness than beaver tribe. White man medicine more worse than white man sickness. Oh, but this is smallpox. It kills and spreads like forest fire. White man medicine full of evil spirit. Uh, uh come here, Atnu. Now watch me, Chief. I'll vaccinate Atenu just to show you how harmless it is. No, no, no vaccinate. No, no. Am I going to have trouble with you two? Look, uh, uh, tell the chief, uh, tell him, well... Tell him he doesn't have the courage of a squaw. Yeah, I'll tell him that. Oh, no, oh, no, no, oh, 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 Mike, do I have to? If the chief sees that you're not afraid. All right. Anything to get rid of. Now, now, chief, watch squaw. Just a little scratch from small needle. Now? Yes, and if it hurts, please remember this is no time to yell. You see, chief? Nothing to it. That all, Sergeant? That's all. All right, Abner, roll up your sleeve. I know she good. You do squaw again. <laughs> then I make up mine. Well, what's another vaccination, more or less? Ready, Kathy? Careful, will you? That last one hurt. Now, now get ready, Atnu, and watch me this time. There you are. Step aside, Mrs. Flanagan. Next patient, please. Me no afraid. Me strong Indian. Me go first. Me chief of tribe. Well, that's more like it. Niwa, Kaya, Roko. Uh, what's he saying, Atenu? If I and I say, before you scratch arm... Oh, I know, I know. Watch squall again. Ah, mm-hmm. watch squall. Yeah. What's the population of these Indians? Oh, a couple of hundred. You know, if your arm holds out, we won't have a bit of trouble with the whole tribe. All the way from Boston. It's become a pin push. Well, that's that, Kathy. On Monday, we can go out and vaccinate the whole tribe. 
You're becoming quite a medicine man, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I've treated frostbite, full teeth, given vaccination. I said broken bones, and once even delivered a baby. Then you'll be able to deliver ours. He must be over two years old by now. Oh, he was a... What did you say? You mean about our baby? Kathy. It won't Uncle John be surprised to see you. Uncle John? Well, we'll go to Calgary. Oh, would Edmonton be there? Darling, you'll have the baby right here. Here? But Mike, we're so far away from everything and everybody. Kathy, the women up here, Mrs. Henderson and the others, they know more about babies than anybody. Even more than I do. But having a baby out here in the wilderness... Wilderness? Oh, darling, there's no place in the world a baby would rather be born. You've never seen this country in the summertime. It's beautiful and it's green. You'll love it. And our son will love it, too. He can fish and hunt. Well, what makes you so sure it's going to be a he? A baby girl wouldn't dare be born to the Flanagans. <laughs> oh, there's a wonderful summer ahead of us, darling. A wonderful summer. <laughs> I counted on time to build up Kathy's confidence in the country. But as the seasons changed, she developed an increasing anxiety about Mrs. Henderson, who would have her baby a couple of months sooner than Kathy. Oh, Mother, just look at the valley. It's greener and more beautiful than I ever dreamed it could be. And the river. Oh, it's like music. All right. Promised a beautiful summer for you. I've tried not to worry, Mike. I can't help it. Uh, you haven't seen Mrs. Henderson worrying, have you? No. You've been forgetting something, Kathy. Women have been having babies for years and years. Long before there was such a place as Henry's Hole. Even before Boston. I guess you're right. Oh, you're always right. Oh, you're always right. Sure. I was always right. Mrs. Henderson's baby was born the following week. It was born dead. We've got to get out of here, Mike. We've got to get out. I won't have my baby in this place. Kathy, I'm awfully sorry about Mrs. Henderson's baby, but nothing's going to happen. If you love me, you'll get me out of here. You'll take me to Calgary. But I, I can't, Kathy. You mean you won't? No, dear, I can't. An overland trip to Calgary is impossible this time of year. You'd have to walk a lot of the way. Then take me to Anything. Don't you understand, dear? I'd have to apply for a transfer. That'd take a month. A long trip at such a late date is much more of a risk for you than, than having the baby here. Mike, if I have to crawl out of Hendrick's hope on my hands and knees, I won't have my baby here. All right, Kathy. It's all right, dear. I'll apply for a transfer. <laughs> When my transfer finally came through, it was already dangerously close to Kathy's time. We were going to Fort Manette by canoe. It was a large settlement, and they had a doctor. But it was a long trip from Henry. Mike, Mike, what is it, dear? I thought you were asleep. Oh, Mike, I'm scared. Well, darling, we're only a couple of days away now. I've never met you. We'll make it, Kathy. I don't want to have my baby out here in the wilderness. Kathy, if if you feel up to it, we can leave now. Travel all night. Oh, anything, anything. Just to get out of here. By daylight, Kathy was half out of her mind. I remembered a cabin somewhere along the river. See with whoever lived there and go on alone. I knew I could get to the doctor. Get the doctor to her more quickly than I could get Kathy to the doctor. I found the cabin. A woman was there. Mrs. Maker, what do you want? What's wrong? My uh, my wife's going to have a baby. I, I'd like to leave her here while I go on to Fort Minute for the doctor. Doctor? For that? She can stay. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Kathy, listen. You'll be all right, Dylan. I'll reach Fort Minute tonight and be back in the morning. Oh, hurry. Please. I will. I will, dear, as fast as I can. Thanks, Mrs. If he don't get back in time, it won't be the first baby I've delivered. I, I don't mean to be any trouble to you. I'm, I'm just so frightened. Getting frightened don't help. If you're going to lose the baby, you'll lose the baby. I don't want to lose my baby. Nobody does. If it's a strong baby, it'll live. If it's weak, it'll die. They say I'm crazy. 
could I do strange things. But I know. I know it's better that way. A weak baby. You cuddle it along for a while. Maybe keep it alive. First thing that comes along, it's gone. Piece of your heart's gone with it. You'd have been better off if a baby came dead. No! No! Oh, please leave me alone. Please! I'm only trying to help you. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone!
They're all a part of the basic rules that people who live in free countries consider important. They're important enough to work and fight to preserve. Throughout history, free men have been called upon to defend their freedom by their actions, by their votes, and sometimes by their force of arms. Remember, freedom is everybody's business. Have you made it yours? on Act Three of Mrs. Mike, starring Jean Tierney in the title role and Dick Powell as Mike. The people of Fort Lynette must have spent days preparing things for us. The walls of my cabin were scrubbed, fresh curtains on the windows, everything shiny. But nothing shone quite as brightly as Kathy's eyes. Oh, my. You I just don't know what to say. Nobody say anything except us, your new friends. And we say to you, welcome. Oh, Sarah, it's so good to be with you again. And now, who you have not met, uh, Dr. McIntosh? I'm here now, Mrs. Flanagan. I'm sorry I couldn't have been with you when you needed me. Didn't miss you at all, Mac. We had a better doctor. Oh, Sarah knows her job all right. Have you named this little beauty yet? Her name is Mary Arun. Mary Maria. And now this is Josette Beauclair and Louis, who is her husband. Hello. And those two beautiful twins you saw there at the landing. Yes, Mrs. Mike, my daughters, Madeleine and Babette. Oh, now may I please see your baby. Ah, oh, the petite, oh, so pretty. You get called, Mrs. Mike. You look out back. I shall plant you food back there. You see, we want you to be happy here. Kathy, Kathy, look. Hello, Mrs. Mike. This is for the baby. Mike. Cradle. This is Pierre. My son, he makes that. But who painted the pictures? The little animals and the flowers. Pierre, my son, he do many things. You Pierre. Thank you for the cradle. It's very beautiful. I'm glad you like it, Mrs. Mike. I'm glad you've come to live with us. Is there any news? The doctor said he's going to live. 
Mike still over there? Live. We'll live. Is that the only thing that's important? Still live. It is not the only thing that is important, but the most important thing. I can't accept things the way you do. Lose a child, have another. Life means nothing up to you. You are wrong, Mrs. Mike. It is that life means everything. Pierre loses an arm. It is great tragedy. But he is still alive. Be grateful you're able to breathe. Is that what you're saying? Oh, this country. You just begin to trust every country has its other. Life is not easy. But one must try to make his life so it is worth the struggle. So it is... Oh, Sergeant. Pierre will be all right. <laughs> Happy. I just can't help it, Mike. To feel another pain. It is good for Sergeant Mike. But will she learn, Georgia? She will learn. Good night. Good night. <laughs> months that followed, Kathy did learn to adjust to the North Country. Now, for the first time, I felt she fully accepted her life up here without reservation. And time went on. Suddenly, before I knew it, Mary Roon was two years old and fought for net already, 25. To celebrate the anniversary, I was going to make a speech. I'm sorry, darling. What were you saying? Well, can't you stop fixing supper long enough for me to rehearse my speech? Only if you want to make it up. Go on. I'm listening. Oh, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here at Fort Manette, we are uh, struggling not against other men, but with other men. Not to control men, but to help control nature. We are struggling... <coughs> Oh, well, I know someone who will stay in one place and listen to every word. You said it, honey. She should be ashamed of herself. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, yes, thanks, thanks. This, uh, this spirit enables us to endure the many hardships that so often come our way. And as I stand before this audience and look out among your wonderful faces, I see representatives of the spirit. Gentlemen, representing our government and Royal Canadian Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Michael Flanagan. This, this is not the speech I had planned to make. I wish I didn't have to make this one. I arrived here late because Dr. McIntosh sent for me. We have just discovered a case of diphtheria here in Fort Manette. <laughs> We've all been in close contact, and the danger of the disease spreading is great. You will return to your homes immediately and have as little contact with your neighbor as possible. Now let's file out of here quickly, and in an orderly manner. Mary, a room. Oh, Mike, do you think she'll be all right? She'll be fine. Let's not wake her. Diphtheria. What's going to happen? We'll know in a few days if this is just an isolated case or if we're really in trouble. Meanwhile, there are precautions. Lock the door. Don't let anyone in. No one. You can talk to people through the window. The main thing is to make no direct contact. You're not going out. Oh, Dr. McIntosh, you'll need my help. But, Mike, you'll be exposing yourself. You can leave my things on the front porch. I'll stay at the post till this blows over. But the baby and I, we'll be here alone. It's the safest way, Kathy. The post is only a few yards off. Mike, what if, what if I need you? If you to... need me, hang something white on the porch. I'll keep a close watch. Be careful, Mike. Oh, please be careful. Within a week, an epidemic was raging. The old mission school was converted into a hospital, and the doctor's small supply of serum became precious. I sent the fastest man I could find for an additional supply. But meanwhile, the white sheet became a common signal and death a familiar visitor. Kathy remained in the cabin with Mary Roon, but she was kept busy preparing broth for the patients of the mission. The broth is ready, Mike. Stay there. I'll bring it out on the porch. <laughs> Mary Roon! No, no! Stay in the house, darling. Go back, sweetheart. Go back. That's a good girl. Here it is, Mike. Oh, darling, you look so tired. I haven't had 
time. We're very much pleased. No better, is it, Mike? Four new cases today, I may help. And still no more serum? Not yet, no. Kathy, Georgette Beauclair, she's got it too. Georgette. Oh, we're trapped, Mike. We're trapped in here in this terrible thing closing in on us. The serum should arrive any time now. As soon as it does, we'll get things under control. Better close the door, dear. I'll come up and get the bra. Kiss the baby for me. Yes, Mike. Yes. Tell George that... Oh, my... Here's the bra, Sarah. Where's the doctor? There, with Georgette. Doctor, what about the serum for Georgette? There's not enough left. From now on, the serum is only for children. Stay with her, mate. Swab her throat to tannic acid and hope it'll do her some good. Georgette died late that afternoon. She might have had a chance if the serum had come. Mike, you'd better get some sleep. Oh, I'm all right, Doc. Oh, you cannot go without sleep forever. Sarah and I have been taking turns. How much serum left? None. It's all gone. From now on, every hour can mean another life. It'll get here, Doc. Maybe tonight, maybe by morning. Meantime, I'm telling you to get back to the post and get some sleep. In front of the post, I turned and looked at our cabin. Hanging from the porch was a white sheet. I rushed back to the mission for Doc McIntosh. He was with us until long after midnight. <laughs> Mary and Ruth, my baby, my baby. We did my what we baby. could, Kathy. We did what we could, Doc. Make nothing so. I know, Doc. Go back to the hospital. Sasha, man. Sasha, man. Don't come in here. It's me, Hussey. I got the serum, Mike. Here. The serum? Better come to the mission right away. It's all right, Mike. I'll have help. Sarah and the others. No, let him go. Go on to the mission, Mike. There's nothing you can do here anymore. My baby's dead. The epidemic stopped just as suddenly as it started. Three days later, I moved my thing back to the cabin. Thank you, Mike. Is that what you said? Be thankful, Mike. It's over. It could have wiped us all out. Yes, it's over. A little cross on the side of the hill. Mary Arun Flanagan. Beloved daughter. Two years old. Don't torture yourself, darling. Life keeps going on. What kind of a life? A life that makes Mrs. Howard old before her time. That drives Mrs. Mazers crazy. A life that takes the arm of a young boy. That kills two dozen people because we're too far away to get serum in time. We've had our share of happiness. Life that snatches an innocent baby into her grave. If that's the kind of life that goes on, I don't want it. Please, Kathy, please. Oh, Mike, let's get out of here. Let's leave this awful country. Let's let's go anywhere. Anywhere. Running away won't solve anything, Kathy. Besides, I can't leave. I, I have responsibilities here. Yes. Toward everyone but your own family. That's not true. Mike, I'm leaving. I'm going where human beings have a decent chance. And if you won't come with me, I'm going alone. Darling, darling, you're not yourself. I can't leave you now. I don't want you to leave either. We've had happiness here. We've had sorrow, too. I've made up my mind. I'm leaving. There was nothing for me to do but arrange for someone to take us south to Hendricks Hope. There, Jim Henderson will get her on the river. Everything is ready, Mrs. Mack. If you get into the canoe. Thanks, Louis. This is where you all came to meet me. And now we're saying goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Mike. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, dear. I will. Yeah. You feel the same way like his mama. But I know on that way. Sarah. Wonderful, Sarah. Happy is. As you well know, I'm, I'm not a man given to sentiment. But I want to say... I'm afraid I've forgotten what I wanted to say. 
God bless you, Kathy. Goodbye, Dr. McIntosh. Mike. Goodbye, darling. Try not to hate me, Mike. I love you, Kathy. If your world seems to have turned upside down, there's one thing you can count on. I'll always love you. I couldn't stay in the cabin. It was too large, or perhaps it was too small, too crowded with memories. At any rate, I moved into the post. But I was not to remain there for long. They sent another Monty to take over at Fort Manette, and I was transferred. It's a good post, Sergeant. I'm sure I'll like it here. Well, I think it's fine all around, Corporal, because I, uh, I'm rather glad to be leaving. Your new post will look mighty small after this. Henry Hope? Oh, I've been stationed there before. Yes, I know. The folks back there were all excited about you coming back. Good luck, Doctor. And so I went down the river. And with each stroke of the paddle, I tried to push all thoughts of Kathy behind me. But every mile of the long trip south brought me closer to the place where Kathy and I had begun life together. Thoughts ever clung to me, surrounded me, followed me. And then I was there, and Jim Henderson was pumping my hand. Mike! Mike Flanagan! How's your missus, Jim and Tommy? Oh, fine, fine. Tommy's a big boy now. Hello, Mr. Mike. Hello, Mrs. Henderson. Well, and who's that? That's a new baby girl. Oh, congratulations. How old is she? Six and a half months now. And her name is Kathy. You see? Oh, she's she's lovely, Mrs. Henderson. I uh well, I, I'm I'm a little tired, Jim. I, I'll run along now and see you folks later. Same cabin as before, Mike. All supplied and ready for you. Thanks, Jim. Much obliged. I knew that they'd have everything ready for me. But as, as I opened the cabin door, the smell of coffee almost knocked me down. It must have timed my arrival almost to the... You're critical of my coffee. Kathy, Kathy. Oh, my. I've done so much running away. When Mrs. Henderson lost her baby, I made it leave here. That's all past, darling. But when I got here and I, and I saw her new baby... Such a healthy, beautiful baby. And then I found out that you were being sent here. And suddenly I knew you were right. That no matter what, life does go on. Kathy. Oh, my. Wherever you are, my life is with you. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. The voice of information and education.